And Father God, this morning we want to thank you. We appreciate your presence. We want to thank you, mighty God, that you are a good God. We want to appreciate the fact that, mighty God, you loved us, that you sent your only begotten Son to come and redeem us. Now as we are standing here, Father God, we are redeemed, and we know that you are a loving Father. That's why we have all the confidence in the name of Jesus. Father God, as we share your word, we want to thank you. You know the hearts of your people. You know what we need to hear. And Father God, we pray that the message this morning will be so relevant. It will touch somebody. It will encourage somebody. It will motivate somebody and it will heal those who are broken hearted. Because you said, come unto me. And Father God, we want to thank you because you are right here. We thank you for your spirit, for your gracious spirit, for your mighty spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Yeah, let's, 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 let's uh, do this, ladies and gentlemen. Since we preached about, uh, we, we taught about guarding your heart, probably last year and a little bit about that this, this, this year. Uh, th that topic has been running each time I meditate, each time I want to prepare the word of God. That, 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 that message just does not want to leave me. And it is for that reason that we are going to continue talking about matters of the heart. Hallelujah. So, for those who were not here, we, the, the, the verse that was read was in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. That says, above all else, guard your heart. Because out of it comes the issues of life. So, that, that, that's the, the, the basis of what we'll be talking about. And then, we are going to expand a little bit and uh, when I was doing uh, the, the, the preparation of this message I was also moved to also include the mind uh, I'm not going to come here and define the mind the way psychologists define it but I'm just going to for the sake of this message just to interchangeably uh, mention the heart and the mind uh, because like if you remember in the book of Psalm chapter 27, 23 verse 7, it says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So you will realize that the Bible sometimes, there are places where the heart and the mind are separated, but there are also verses where the mind and the heart goes like hand in hand. Uh, because just imagine the verse that I read that says that, as a man thinketh in his heart. We normally don't think with our hearts, not so. We think with our mind, but the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So that's why I said, they don't be surprised. The topic of this message will be, guard your heart and or your mind. Guard your heart and or your mind. Uh, let's just go straight to the book of Colossians. And I'm going to read chapter 3, and then we will read verses 1 and 2. Colossians chapter 3, you will re realize that throughout this message, we will talk about the heart, we will talk about the mind, and then I believe that we are just going to get what the message will be about. Now, I'm reading it here from the NIV. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, it says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Listen to this. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Verse 2. Verse 1 says, Set your heart on things above. Verse number 2. Set your minds on things above. So you'll realize verse 1 is talking about Heart, verse 2 is talking about the mind. I'm still going to read a lot of verses that, is, that are talking about both the mind and the heart. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, the life that we are living, you will agree with me that every other day you are hearing bad news, heartbreaking stuff. That's why God is saying, for us not to have those heartbreaks, for us not to lose direction, to, 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 to lose hope, to lose faith. Let us set our hearts first 
on things above and our minds on things above. I will explain as we go uh, uh, onwards what I mean. But I want us to understand the word set is to fix. The word of God says that, uh, I mean, the, the, the New Living Translation puts it this way. It says, set your sight on things above. What you focus on, what you look at, what you put your emphasis on, that is very important because that will determine where you go. That's why they said bank, bad company corrupts what? Good character, yes. So if you spend time worrying, if you spend time looking at the negatives, guess what? You will end up being negative. But if you spend time looking on the positives and appreciating and praising God and thanking God for what you have, you will be this positive person, this vibrant person, and you will be a person that will be easy to be. Hallelujah. Because nobody, if you didn't know, nobody wants to be around somebody who's always grumbling, complaining, criticizing, analyzing everything. People want to be with somebody who is easy going, I mean, appreciating everything. Eh? Hallelujah. And then this, I want to, say, to remind you that it says, set your heart. God is not going to force you to, 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 to have your heart focused on, on things above. It is your responsibility to set your heart. Let me tell you, in the process of setting, it's not going to be an easy process. Sometimes you'll have to force yourself. It's just like praying. It's not every day where you wake up and you just feel like you're in the spirit of praying. Sometimes you just feel like you are not in the mood, but you have to pray. Because you don't only have to pray when you're in the mood or when you pray always. The word of God says pray always. Now the matter of setting your heart, your, your heart it's something that you must do continuously. It's not something that you can say, oh no, today, no, 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 no. I feel very spiritual. I'm feeling very strong. Tomorrow, guess what? You are down. It's something that every day when you wake up, you must say, Father God, help me to set my heart on things above. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 37, verse 4. Some of the, the, the scriptures, I'm just going to quote them. But if you're writing, it's fine. You can write them. Psalm chapter 37, verse 4. It says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of of your heart. God knows that you've got the desires of your heart. God knows that there is something that you're burning about. There's something that you said, if it can go like this, I will be very happy. Let me tell you, there are times where you will look at what you're planning and you realize, like, I'm not going to achieve what I desire. But I want to encourage you this morning. Just keep on trusting in the Lord. God is in the process of making sure that he gives you the desires of your heart. Just like a father. I mean, if you're a normal father, you, you, you are more than happy to, 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 to bless your child when it's their birthday or whatever. That they've achieved something just to bless them and to give them what they've been asking. Let, let me just say like what many people say. They say, if you pass your grades very well, this, will, this is what I will buy for you. And then I'm telling you, if you are a normal father, when they've done their part, you are more than willing and you are excited about giving them their desires. Now, if you and I, being people that we are, like it when we give the desires of our children, how much more our Heavenly Father Amen. when He gives us the desires? Hallelujah. Let's just continue. Our part is to delight in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a verse that I'm just going to quote that says, Do not get weary in doing good. I mean, sometimes you may feel like, oh, I'm just doing good, I'm just doing good. It's like there's nothing that is happening. Don't get tired of doing good. God is looking at you. There is this verse that I also want to, to, to quote. It's Proverbs chapter... 19 verse 21. It says, many are the plans in a man's heart, 
but it is the Lord's purpose. Let me tell you, you can have a lot of plans. You can say in 2023, I want this, 2027. But let me tell you, you are not the one who's got the final say. God is the one who has the final say. And don't give yourself too much headache about things that you cannot control. Because you don't know what two, three, four years will bring down the line. But just be content with what you have. And praise God and trust him that the same God who was with me yesterday, the same God who is with me today, will be the same God who will be with me tomorrow. And just face tomorrow with confidence. Hallelujah. Because, I mean, I see a lot of people saying, no, the way things are happening, it's like, no, I won't be able to do this and that and that. Only to find that God knows that they will be able to do that. Because, by the way, it's not our strength that matters. But it is not by might, it is not by power, it is by the Spirit of God. So we just put our goals, our desires before God and pray and trust God and God will give us those desires. Hallelujah. I'm just going to move a little bit swiftly now. That's why I want to say a statement that you must understand uh, carefully. It's good to plan. It's good to, to, to plan. I'm not against planning. But don't over plan to such an extent that you forget to live today. Worrying about what will happen five years from now. I know there are such people, even that they are starving themselves, they are not even eating healthy food because they are saving. For what? They don't even know whether they will be there 10 years from now. So when you save, just get, also get time to enjoy. Man. How many people who, who were here, no, not, I don't want to say here, who were alive last year, and they were saving, they were doing all this, they are, not, they are gone now. It's like if only they knew that 2020 was their last year, maybe they would have enjoyed a bit more. Yeah. Maybe they would have gone to places, they would have visited, gone to the sea and stuff like that. So you plan, but enjoy every day of your life. And praise God and thank God for what you have. Don't be like a guy whose fridge is full of a lot of meat, ration, everything, but they are just eating vegetables and starving themselves. They said, no, this is for visitors. <laughs> they don't even know when are the visitors coming. <laughs> Romans chapter 12, verse 2, you know this one very well. Renew your mind. Do not conform yourself to... Let's just read it. Romans chapter 12. Here it is. I think that you're getting something. Yeah. All right. It says, Romans 12 verse 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind needs to be renewed. Every day, because when it is renewed, you know what? You know what is God's will, you know what is good, and you know what is pleasing, and what is the perfect will of God. Let me tell you, it's so relaxing, it's so refreshing when you're living in the perfect will of God. How do you know the perfect will of God? You renew your mind every day. Every garbage that is in your mind, you just take it out and fill your mind with the word of God. When you're full of the word of, of God, when life shakes you, guess what? Spring out the word of God. But when you're full of anger, when you're full of complaints, every little thing, you just lose it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Renew your mind. And I want to repeat, you don't just renew it once like a driver's license after five years. No. <laughs> you renew it every day. Hallelujah. All right, let's just go to, 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 to my favorite scripture, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Uh, this will just uh, bring us almost to conclusion. Philippians chapter 4. Be anxious for nothing. The other scripture says, 
do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer, you've got to pray. Don't wait, don't depend on other people's prayer. You must pray. Open your mouth and pray to your heavenly father. It's you who do the action. It's, 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 we, we're living in the time where we know better. And because we know better, we must do better. There's nothing wrong about saying, Pastor, pray for me for this and that. But my prayer must just be combining, adding to your prayers. Don't, don't, don't expect to, to come to the pastor not having prayed and expect that everything, it, the pastor will just start from scratch. It's easier, uh, it's like when you want to buy something. It's easier when you say, hey, my brother, I want to buy uh, bread. They said it's 10 rand, I've got 9 rand here, can you give me a rand? But just imagine if you go to somebody and say, I want to buy bread, I've got only 50 cents or I've got nothing. It just becomes a little bit challenging to help you, if you understand what I'm saying. Okay, be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and petitions with thanksgiving. I can't overemphasize the importance of giving thanks. Just keep on giving thanks. Like what I was talking about, my mother, just give thanks for everything. Give thanks. The fact that you are here, give thanks. Give thanks for what you have and what you are still believing God for. Just give thanks. Be a thankful person. Listen to this. If you do this, if you are not anxious for nothing, if you set your mind on, on the things above, if you guard your heart, this is the result. And these results, you don't get them uh, uh, before you do one. It's like you must do A, B, C to get X, Y, Z. So they, they said, if you do all those things, you are not anxious. Verse 7, and the peace of God. Ah, we're living in the time where even if you can take everything away from me, don't take away the peace of God. When I sleep in the evening, at night, I want to have the peace of God. I don't want to be adding and subtracting when other people are sleeping. I don't want to be worrying about 2023 and... I, I, I want the peace of God. Man. Peace that surpasses human understanding. The peace of God, and you can't have the peace of God without the God of peace. You must have a relationship with the God of peace. Unfortunately, there are people that are think, thinking they will get peace in wrong resources. They think money will do it. Maybe education will do it. Maybe if I... No, no, no. The peace that surpasses human understanding is the peace of God. And the peace of God can only be found from God. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, verse 8, it, 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 it says, Finally, brothers, brothers, whatever is true. I mean, even a child, you know, when they do something wrong, they know. You look at them without even saying a thing. You can see from their faces that they know that they're doing something wrong. Now, if children know that this is wrong, daddy does not like this, whatever is true, my brothers and sisters, let's cling to what is true. Let's not fool ourselves. Man. You can fool other people, but you cannot fool yourself. Let's cling to what is true. You know that Jojo is not allowed. So why do you find yourself involved in Jojos? Eh? You know that a gossiping is not allowed or a slandering is not allowed. So why do you do it? Okay, the word of God says, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right. We know what is right, we know what is wrong. Let's do the right thing. Shun the wrong and do the right. Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, do something that is lovely, man. Something that you will be proud of. I mean, when, even when you move around, something that is lovely, that is admirable. If anything is excellent, praiseworthy, think about such things. This answers the question of what do I have to think about? When the word of God said, set, set your mind on things above. These are the things that you are supposed to think about. Think about the things that will bring improvement. That will bring encouragement to somebody. Think about the things that will bring about uh, development. Things that will uplift somebody. Somebody is down. Think about how can I uplift that person? 
Hallelujah. Like I said, when you go down, it says whatever you have learned or received, we've already learned a lot of things. We've already received a lot of messages. We've already had powerful sermons. Put into practice and listen, and the God of peace will be with you. You want this, to, to live this life uh, enjoying it? Have the God of peace. Think about the good things. Meditate on the word of God. I want, I, I want to repeat Put effort. If you don't put effort and you think things will just happen automatically, forget it. You just have to put effort. Sometimes you must just tell yourself, no, 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 no. no. What I'm thinking about, no, 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 no. I must change this station. If it's a radio station that is playing on your head, you must say, no, 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 no. Let me get something better. Because sometimes you can feel that you were watching this movie. The more you are watching it, the more you are becoming angry. So why do you keep on watching it? And you start sweating. Eh? Just change the channel, man. We, you can do better than that. Before you realize it, you are crying. Eh? Haven't you seen such people? You ask yourself, well, you are burning. Why don't you remove your hand? Think about things that motivate you, man. Have you ever seen how, 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 how powerful it is, how encouraging it is when you visit somebody? And when just that 20, 30 minutes of your interaction, when you leave that office, when you leave that person, you just feel energized, man. You just feel like I can read that book. I can do that thing. I can. You just feel motivated. But there are other people when you meet them, man. You were a little bit here. Just 15, 20 minutes, you just feel like, let me go to sleep. I'm so tired. Yeah. The good thing is that as human beings, we are different from plants and other animals. We've got the power to choose. You can choose who you want to be. You can choose where you want to set your heart. You can choose where you want to set your mind. And the consequences are inevitable. Whatever you plant, you're going to reap. Let's close our eyes. And Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you, mighty God, just to be reminded that it is up to us. We have to decide. And we want to thank you, mighty God. We believe that simple as it was. We believe that, Father God, you've spoken to somebody. They are going to rectify here and there. And they are just going to have the peace that surpasses human understanding. They are going to have the peace that will make people to ask, Why are you always smiling? And they will say, I know the God of peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, mighty God, even as we move out of this place, the challenges that we're going to meet at the workplace, at home, at wherever we find ourselves, we want to thank you, mighty God, that we, want, we won't forget that we've got to set our minds on things above. We have to set our minds on the almighty God. In Jesus' precious mighty name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.